hi guys okay no let me not even be fake hi guys and welcome back to my channel so today we are concluding our Jonah series we are concluding what we have learnt and by the grace of God we've all learnt something we're all applying what we have learned every single week so let's do a small small recap of what we learned in the last few weeks so the first journey series we spoke about don't run away from destiny don't run away from what god wants to use you for but at the same time even when you're running you'll still meet people that you're meant to be helping and maybe even bring to christ that's what we learned second episode we spoke on the process before your destiny the process in which you will consecrate get to know god get to you know dwell in his presence get to know who he is and also experience his power experience his love his compassion and therefore in which he will launch you out into the world to definitely do his work and walk in your destiny and fulfill destiny and last week we spoke on um we spoke on the standard of, of the standard of your destiny we spoke on the standard of your destiny what god expects from you what it is that you are meant to do and what it is that you will execute and how it can actually help execute what god desires for you because you know eventually jonah went to nineveh spoke the word of god told people the warning that god wanted them to hear and they all follow suit in which god showed mercy upon the city of Nineveh so that's what we got up to so today we are going to be reading Jonah chapter 4 and I'm not going to lie I kind of had to usually I read like my bible my bible is the version new king james version but when I read this chapter out I kind of was scratching my head a little bit because I was just kind of thinking to myself like I was just kind of thinking to myself like um like I don't really really get it and i was just asking god even just now like god please help me um kind of dissect this a little bit because really and truly like <laughs> i was really trying to understand why in this chapter jonah's angry and what it really signifies in like the real world and in reality so i just kind of turned to reading the message translation and we're all going to basically just dissect this chapter together because I don't quite, maybe as this video progresses, some things may come to light. But at the moment, I'm just kind of thinking like, okay, why was Jonah actually angry? Is there a reason why after fulfilling destiny, he was upset? So let us read Jonah chapter four. And I'm going to read from verse one. The message translation which says jonah was furious he lost his temper he yelled at god god i knew it when i was back home i knew this was going to happen that's why i ran off to tarshish i knew you were sheer grace and i knew you were sheer grace and mercy not easily angered rich in love and ready at the drop of a hat to turn your plans to of punishment into a program of forgiveness verse three so god if you won't kill them kill me and better off dead verse 4 god said what do you have to be angry about but jonah just left he went out of the city to the east and sat down in a sulk he put together a makeshift shelter of leafy branches and sat there in the shade to see what would happen to the city god arranged for a, br a broad leaf tree to, sh to spring up it grew over jonah to call him off and get him out of his angry sulk Jonah was pleased and enjoyed the shade. Life was looking up. But then God sent a worm. By dawn of the next day, the worm had bored into the shade tree and it withered away. The sun came up and God sent a hot, blistering wind from the east. The sun beat down on Jonah's head and he started to faint. He prayed to die and better off dead. Then God said to Jonah, what right do you have to be angry about this shade tree? Jonah said, plenty of right. It's made me angry enough to die. Verse 10, God said, what's this? How is it that you, you can change your feelings from pleasure to anger overnight about a mere shade tree you did nothing to get? You neither planted nor watered it. It grew up one night and died the next night. So why can't I likewise change what I feel about Nineveh from anger to pleasure? This great city of more than 120,000 childlike, childlike people who don't yet know right from wrong to say nothing of all the innocent animals. 
Okay, before we dissect, Heavenly Father, I just come before you, Lord, and I just ask that, Lord, you help us understand this chapter, that, Father, Lord, it is your spirit that leads us, oh God, to understand what we need to understand from this chapter. Father, Lord, anything, Lord, that we can use and implement in our everyday lives and in reality for the lord reveal unto us now in jesus mighty name so what i actually gather from jonah chapter four is the fact that jonah got to a place where he said yes okay god you you've put me in a place where i have to succumb to fulfilling your will but in fulfilling destiny and understanding the standard of his destiny he was expecting what God had said he would do, but forgot the kind of God that he served. God can say that he's your called, but if you don't humble yourself and really truly understand the God that you serve, you will not understand or you will not expect the changes and the dynamics that will happen as you go along your destiny. God is a forever change. That the things in environments are forever changing because prophecies will be fulfilled. Things will be taking place. We're in a, in a in a dispensation where so many things are happening. It doesn't mean that there isn't a destiny or a mandate or a vision that is set in place, and therefore there should be things in order to do to execute these things from happening. But there comes a time when. Things will be moving so fast and things will be changing and God isn't a God that just reveals one thing and you just stick to it. There's always something, there's always new things to reveal. Okay, I want you to do this and later on down the line he will tell you, this is the reason why I want you to do this. And later on down the line he will tell you, those that he wants you to impact while you're doing those things. It, he, God doesn't tell you things in just one go. And for Jonah to say that, God, I knew it. That's why I ran away from you because I knew that you you wouldn't punish those people and I knew that it would turn into forgiveness. He forgot the God that he served and therefore you are jeopardizing what God wanted to use you for because you are telling God that why would you do that? I'm angry with you. If you're not going to kill those people then you might as well kill me. He's throwing all all his toys out of the basket because God did not punish people because that was the expectation that he had of God but he forgot the God that he served even Jonah said himself you are a God of grace you are forgiven of mercy if you identify those things why is there no knowledge or acknowledgement that do you know what maybe I'm being used for a certain reason so therefore it just highlights that Jonah did not know the God he served and therefore because you do not know the God that you serve it means that you don't actually understand the kind of mission that you are on just because God said that I want to punish these people and I'm going to send you to send forth the word doesn't mean that you're just going to be a mere vessel that is just going to be sent out to just speak actions going to be taken afterwards god sent you there as a test as a test for the people in nineveh so therefore he can know what to do next because let's say for example he went to nineveh he saw that people wouldn't he saw that people would not he saw that maybe some people would rebel, some people's hearts would be hardened, then God would know what to do. But God is a forever seeing God. He knew that, yes, they would actually accept me, but they needed to be a full, they needed to be a full warning before anything can take place. And therefore, the punishment that was going to come to Nineveh, it stopped. God changed his mind and said, look, God changed his mind and said, look, the people here, they have followed through the direction and the warning that has been sent to them. And therefore, God used an illustration, used a visual representation of what he meant. Jonah threw all his toys out of the pram because he had this expectation of God and therefore forgot that you do not set the standard or the expectation of God. There's a thing that he forgot is that you do not, as a mere human being, as a mere man, you don't set the standard for God. God sets the standard, he sets the bar high and you follow suit. You don't say, oh, but God, I knew that you were going to do this and this is what was going to happen. You don't tell God what he's going to do or you don't tell God or his plans or his direction or what he's going to do because God had to bring a visual representation and said, okay, this tree, I let it hang over you. Jonah was content because the tree was hanging over his head. He was now pleased. He was now calm because things were now going his way. 
In your destiny, things cannot go your way. In your destiny, you don't tell God what he's going to do or you don't set the standard or you don't set the expectation of what God is going to do. God is going to tell you what you're going to do and you follow suit. This is his, again, we spoke about God steering the ship. If the captain says we're going left, we're going left. If the captain says we're going right, we're going right. It's not the captain says we're going right and his crew members start questioning him and say, yeah, I knew that you were going to do that. Yeah, what? Da, 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 da. Oh, like you might as well just leave me alone. Da, da. Because obviously he knows that. And this is, is, is crazy because people do that. They treat God as if like, you know, I know that you're merciful. So you're going to forgive me anyway. So I'm just going to talk to you anyhow. Some people feel like they can just speak to God anyhow and unfortunately for Jonah he was now saying if you're not going to kill up those people forgetting the fact that God is a merciful God you you know that this is what he's like but you didn't acknowledge that this is the God that you serve and therefore you are just there to send a warning and you wait for God to move you don't say oh God you need to do this otherwise I'm going to do this you can't give God ultimatums it doesn't work like that in your destiny you need to know your place to run the race do you understand and it's unfortunate enough the fact that God really had to take his time to explain because the, he he sent a tree he he the tree grew up into this big tree to cover him and Jonah was now pleased and then God sent a worm to now kill it and Jonah was angry again so God had to basically tell him that how can you be angry over something that you didn't work for you didn't labor over, you didn't do anything for it to be there, you just enjoyed the benefits of it. And you're being angry and you're through and you're getting you're getting frustrated. And then God then said, But you don't have a right to be angry when I change my mind when it concerns my people. You're just a you're just a mere vessel that I've asked. No, you're just a mere vessel that I've instructed and told to go forth and send a warning. But you want to get angry over something that you have not worked for, you did not bring into the world, you did not do. And a lot of believers are like that. You are not the one that brought, you're not the one that sprung forth something. You're not the one that created that thing. But when God sends you forth and he sends you a mission for your destiny or a mandate for your destiny, you then grow winged and you feel like you can tell God what to do. God is not that, God is merciful, yes. But if you take the mick, you will get pricked. Does that make sense? Because he's not a God to, to just mess about with. Yes, he is a merciful God, but if a God can bring judgment to a whole city, who are you? And a lot of people forget the God that we serve. You can say, yes, God, you are mighty. Yes, God, you are wonderful. Maybe you've tasted a bit of how he moves. Because for that seat, I'm sure, for that seat to be moving and rocking and stuff like that in um, in what we saw in chapter I believe in chapter one and what we saw in chapter one, the Steve rocking and stuff, that was just a small portion of God's power that he saw. And he felt like, yeah, okay, God, I fear you telling people that he fears God and yada, yada, yada. But then when it came, when it comes down to now fulfilling the destiny, you, you feel like you have the right to get upset and now feel like you can give God ultimatums. So many people do that. You forget and you take your eyes actually off the actual prize and you forget the God that you're serving and you forget the reason why you're walking along with God and why you're walking in his vineyard. You forget it completely and start behaving chaotic. We need to change. We need to change. I know there's been times where I've given God ultimatums and certain things because I just felt so frustrated. And literally... This is, do not alternate your destiny. Do not alternate your destiny because of your emotions, because of your feelings, because of the expectations that you're trying to set for God, because of how you think that things should go, or because you feel like, okay, you've gotten to a certain place now, you've seen a small glimpse of God's power that you feel like you can walk in that certain power and now start telling God what to do. God is God. You are who he created. You are not his equal. You are not his age mate. You are not his height mate. You are not his grace mate. You are not his might mate.
might mates that's the new one because god is mighty right you're not his might mate so why what makes you think that you can put yourself in the place of god he's telling god if you don't kill them kill me since when do we do that so let's bow our heads and pray heavenly father i just come before you lord god and i just thank you for this chapter that lord help us and have mercy on us god in times oh lord where god we have given you ultimatums god concerning our destinies and what you want us to do but the lord god we have an understanding that lord everything is a process we have an understanding there's a standard for our destiny we have an understanding that almighty god we should not run away from destiny and lord god as we conclude this segment this series i pray that almighty father you have your way in us father shape shape us mold us um change us break us almighty god and lord god may we be humble and not take our eyes off the prize may we understand you more may we understand your works may we understand why you do things may we understand the god we serve may we understand your mind may we understand the way you do things may we understand the almighty god you too god you have the ultimate say father you have the final say in the mighty name of jesus everybody that is listening god anyone or father who has given you automatons that has told you what to do that has tried to put themselves in your place father lord god have mercy upon them father lord god i pray that lord you do as you may in the name of jesus and father lord may we not jeopardize what you want to use us for may our characters not get in the way of what you want to use us for father lord may our characters not get in the way of of your will may our characters not get in the way almighty father of you moving in any establishment that father we are planted in heavenly god heavenly father take your way and have your place in the mighty name of jesus i would just like to thank you all for joining this video i hope it makes sense i hope that we have learned something and i hope that you guys also continue to kind of study into jonah maybe there's new revelations new things that god will bring forth and do not hesitate to share what you learn and what else you pick from this whole series if there's anything new you have learned definitely comment down below